Between 1818 and 1910, there would be six different forts to bear the name Walla Walla, three of them fur trade posts and three military posts. No two were occupied simultaneously. In 1818, the Northwest Company built a trading post for the fur trade at the mouth of the Walla Walla River, near present-day Wallula. Originally named Fort Nez Pierce, it was made of driftwood from the river and then renamed Fort Walla Walla when the Northwest Company was acquired by the Hudson's Bay Company in 1821. This structure eventually burned down, and the second Fort Walla Walla was built again at the same site. It continued to function as an economic hub for the region until it burned down in 1841. The Hudson's Bay Company rebuilt the fort again in 1842, this time of adobe brick. This post was abandoned during the general violence that followed the region's 1855 Treaty Council, and because the fur trade was waning, it was not rebuilt. The Treaty of 1855 aroused widespread opposition and unrest among many of the tribal people, who lost much of their traditional lands. Inaccurate reports about the treaty brought a rush of American settlers into the region, adding to the pressures. Then, at a council in 1856, Washington Territorial Governor Isaac Stevens told the Indian people that if they were not happy, they could go to war. It was an ultimatum that resulted in bloodshed for years on both sides. A few miles away from the council, up Mill Creek, Lieutenant Colonel Edward Steptoe and his federal troops set up a camp. After a brief skirmish, the soldiers built a stockade and blockhouse and renamed the site Fort Walla Walla. This was the start of a permanent military presence in the area. A few months later, Steptoe built a larger temporary Fort Walla Walla on the old treaty grounds in what is now downtown Walla Walla. The second military fort included officers' quarters and enlisted men's barracks, plus a storehouse, blockhouse, hospital, and stables. This location continued to be used while a permanent fort was constructed on a ridge one mile to the southwest. This third and final U.S. military fort Walla Walla was completed in 1858. Originally situated on a one-square-mile military reserve, the fort was used primarily as a cavalry outpost. It included additional facilities like a blacksmith, granary, and a sawmill, all needed for the long-term post. The fort was integral to the local economy, purchasing livestock and supplies and hiring civilians to do certain jobs. The army was also called upon to assist local law enforcement at times. The soldiers from the fort were involved in a number of actions, including the Battle of Steptoe Butte near Rosalia, Washington, and an expedition north of the Snake River led by Colonel George Wright. Except for a small contingent, fort soldiers were sent east when the Civil War began. During those years, the main troops here were augmented by Washington, Oregon, and California militia. During the 1870s, troops fought in the regional Indian Wars, including the Nez Pierce War battles of White Bird Canyon and Cottonwood Canyon in 1877. After the 70s, the presence of the fort helped keep peace between the Euro-American settlers and the homeland tribes. The fort was officially abandoned in 1910, but reopened briefly in 1917 for recruits who served as the 146th Field Artillery during World War I. In 1921, it was transferred to the Veterans Bureau and several buildings were remodeled for use as a tuberculosis hospital. Today, 15 original fort structures have survived on what is now the grounds of the Jonathan M. Wainwright Memorial VA Medical Center, reminding Walla Walla of its not-too-distant military past. 